Hello everyone. For our chapter two video lecture, I am going to complete project 2A out of your textbook. It begins on page 125. I've already opened up the 2A student data file tree inventory, which is shown here on my screen. And now we're going to go ahead and start the work. So you ready? Let's go. So again, I'm going to just go by the instructions shown in the textbook, the same thing you would do for the homework. The first thing is tell us to do is to create a new folder. I'm going to click on the file button, do a save as, I'll do a browse, and I'm going to create an actual new folder. So I'm going to click where it says new folder. And the actual name is going to be my last name, underscore my first name, followed by 2A tree inventory. So I'm creating a brand new folder as indicated in the instructions. Okay, I'm going to save that file in there. The next thing they tell us to do, and again, I'm just pretty much going step by step. They want us to point to column C. So here is column C. And then drag to the right to select column C and D. So I'm going to select column C and D. I'm going to right click my mouse and then click the insert button. And that allows me to add new columns into the actual cell. All right. Then we're going to go down to cell C11. Let's find C11 in my new column. I'm going to type the number in 13129 as instructed. Notice that when you type in, it shows a period in the actual uh, toolbar. It shows you what cell you're in. I'm going to click the check button here to record that, or you can just press the enter key. All right? So on the home tab, again, here's my home tab. We're going to go to the editing section, which is here. Under the editing section, we're going to click on the field button. Well, first of all, make sure this active cell. So C lab is active. I'm going to click on the field button, and then I'm going to click where it says to do a flash field. And you notice that when I did the flash field, what it did was it listed, it filled the actual numbers in this column. So when I did the flash field, notice that this is the same number that you see by the item category. By doing the actual flash field, what it did was it took the actual numbers that shown in column B and recorded all of those numbers in column C. Okay? Next, we're going to go to column D11, and in column D11, I'm going to type the word OAK, o -A -K, and then press the enter key. And now I'm going to do another flash field, but I'm going to do it differently. This time, keeping that cell active, I'm going to hit Control E, which also is going to do a flash field. So what you'll notice in Excel is that there are several ways of doing the same thing in Excel. So we'll learn different shortcuts to do the same thing. So again, notice now that the category is shown in column D. And by putting the word oak in there, what it did was a flash field and all of the actual types of category items are shown now in column D. All right. So now I don't really need column B anymore because I've separated column B into two separate columns. So I'm going to right click, highlight column B, and click on the delete button to get rid of that. Next, in cell B10, which is here, I'm going to highlight cell B10. They want me to type item number. So that's going to be the actual heading for cell B10. And then press enter. Then I'm going to highlight column C, and on my home tab, from the actual clipboard, clipboard is over here to the top left-hand corner, I'm going to click on the cut button. 
And what you see now is that now we have highlighted column C. I'm going to now click on cell H1. So let me scroll up so we can see cell H1. Go back to the clipboard and click on the paste button. And now I'm going to actually have different options on the paste. I'm going to click here where it says paste. So what we've done was we've took the information that was in column C and moved it over to column H by using the clipboard push portion in Excel. So now that column C is empty, I'm going to delete column C. All right. Now I'm going to select from column A through G. And I want to make sure that the information is going to fit properly. So I'm going to just highlight column A through G. And then I'm going to double click my mouse. What that does is it's going to do the actual auto fit. We double click the mouse now and make sure that each column has enough width to show the information shown in those different columns. You doing okay so far? All right. So next I want to do is call a merge and center. And I'm going to merge from A1 all the way to H1. So I'm going to highlight from cell A1 over to cell H1. I'm going to apply the title style. So I'm going to go here to my style section, which is here. And for the sales styles, I'm going to apply the title. So I'm going to click here where it says title. So now I have a title in that first cell. Then I'm going to select the range from A2 to H2. And in this category, I'm going to select the sales style of heading one. So I have a title, then I have the heading one. And I want to do a merge and center for both of those. I want to highlight from A1 to H1, click where it says merge and center, highlight from A2 to H2, and also oh, highlight again, highlight from there, and then click where it says merge and center. So, of course, if I'm going too fast, it's a video. So you can always slow it down, and you can always rewatch the actual video. So I've gotten that portion done for row A and for row, row, for row 1 and for row 2. I'm turning to the next page. And next, I want to highlight my cell as being B4. So I'm going to highlight cell B4. And in cell B4, I'm looking to show the total number of items in stock. And I'm going to use an actual formula to do that. So I'm going to look at my formulas tab. So I can click where it says formula. And under the formulas tab, I have what's known as my function library group, which is here. And I'm going to click on the auto sum button in that group. So once I click on the auto sum button, I have different options. And we're trying to see what information are we trying to actually add up. I want to add in the information from cell A11 through A39. So I'm going to click on the sum button. And I want to type in A11. And then I'm going to put in my colon. And then put in A39. So we're saying it's some of the items from cell A11 through cell A39. Press the enter key. If done correctly, the amount you should get should be 3022. Okay, you did a good job for that. Now cell B5 is asking you for the average price. So those are the prices that are shown here in column D. So to get the average price, I'm going to go back to my auto sum key and this time click where it says average. And this time I want from D11 through D39. I'm just going to highlight it from D11. I'm going to go all the way down to D39. You can type it in or you can highlight it and get the same result and then press the enter key. And now it shows the average price should be $107.00. 89 cents. 
Is that what you got? Good job. The next function would be the median function. And what the median does, it pretty much just finds the middle number. So the median just finds the meat of the middle number. And once again, we're going to be focused on the actual retail price. So I'll click on the auto sum. And notice I don't see it, right? So I'll click where it says more functions. I'm going to click where it says more functions. For my category, I'm going to choose statistics. And scroll down to the M section and click where it says median. And then press the OK button. And then for the actual range, so where it says number one, I'm going to type in from D11 through D39. So again, I'm telling the computer to look in sales D11 through D39 to find the actual medium. All right. I'm then going to hit the tab button. Just click on OK. So now the medium price, which is the middle number, is 107.99. I'm going to do one more or two more for this one. Then I'm going to stop it just to keep this video under 15 minutes. So next thing we're going to look for would be the lowest price, which would be the actual minimum. So click on the auto sum key. I'm going to click on minimum. And once again, my range would be from D11 through D39. It has showed me the actual lowest price, which would be 102.99 is our lowest price. Then for the highest price, again, click auto sum. Click this time on maximum. Highlight the same information on the retail price. And I click on the enter button. And the highest price will be $117.98. So to recap, we pretty much use our auto sum functions to determine the sum, the total items in stock, the average price, medium price, lowest price, as well as the high price. Okay? So stay tuned. I'm going to come back with a second video. I've completed up to page 130. We'll start off there for the next video. Again, I'm trying to keep these videos not too long so that you don't get bored. All right? See you soon.